<laughs> okay. Art 101 with Mr. Burger. Welcome to Art 101 with me, Mr. Berger. I'm a professional artist and a master educator, and today I'm with Etta and with Hank, and we're going to talk a little bit about some art that you might be interested in. Now, right behind us, we have Shrek's house. Now, it's not really Shrek's house, but we play pretend sometimes. Yeah. And and there are all kinds of places that we can go and imaginations oh, and things I'm like that. Take two. So right behind us is Shrek's house. Now, it's not really Shrek's house. We play pretend out in the woods sometimes. And when we're playing pretend, we can make up all kinds of different fantasies. And a fantasy that was perpetuated for years and years and years was the idea of Pompeii, a city in Italy that existed but was thought to be more of a myth than a real thing. So today, we're going to talk a little bit about the real city of Pompeii, right? Yeah. Okay, now, let's go ahead and get into that story. I've had the great pleasure to travel to all kinds of cool places around the world. I've been to the Louvre, I've been to small and large art museums all across the world. I've visited well over 15 countries on three continents so far in my life. And I gotta tell you, way at the tippy top of the list is my excursion to visit Pompeii. So let's get on with it. Pompeii was a very large and wealthy city in southern Italy, founded in the 8th century BC. It was an important port, and it sets along roadways that travel north and south through Italy. This made a natural industrial and trading center. And religiously, I guess, the Greeks and Romans had a series of gods and goddesses that they worshipped and whatnot, and one of those was Vulcan. And as we fast forward to 79 AD, the people of Pompeii were in the midst of Vulcanalia, a celebration of the fire god, the volcano god, clearly being Vulcan. And they saw these earthquakes and smoke that might have been pluming out of the volcano as a sign of his pleasure that they were having this celebration. Side note, before the 1600s, there was no word for volcano. The people of Pompeii simply had no idea what this was. But there were signs that something bad was going to happen. They just didn't recognize that the signs that they saw were a sign of volcanic activity. For example, the water got very acidic very quickly, causing a lot of the fish to die. The water wells were drying up very, very quickly. Again, a sign that something bad was happening. And it's really hard to explain the unexplainable, especially to someone that has no background knowledge or any understanding of the operations of our Earth. How do you water all the time, Dad? Oh, my bad. On the afternoon of August the 24th, 79 AD, it was very evident that the volcano was not dormant as Pompeii was buried by ash, lava, debris, and all those other things that come with the eruption of Mount Vesuvius. A volcanic cloud of dust would rise about 12 miles up into the air, blocking out the sun, and six inches of ash would fall every hour on the city. Within 18 hours, the entire city was buried. Approximately 30,000 people had died. And when you think about the citizens that stayed, you had two major classes of folks that stayed. The very wealthy stayed because they wanted to stay and protect their assets. And the very poor stayed because they didn't have any other option. Well, what the hell is supposed to do, you moron? Watch your cussing now, will you? When the ash had finally stopped falling, there was over 25 feet of volcanic material that was settling on top of what was once Pompeii. This ash would compact into a mud, encasing and preserving the city of Pompeii for quite some time. As time passed, 
the idea of Pompeii, the location of Pompeii, had kind of fogged in people's memories. This place, thought to be Pompeii, became more of a myth than a reality. Nearly 2,000 years would pass. Another city would be founded on what was once the city of Pompeii. The people that would remain in Pompeii were smothered by ash, gas, or crushed by the collapsing buildings, or large pieces of falling debris that shot out of the volcano like a cannon. The people were also ravaged by pyroclastic surges. These are ash, lava, and gas surges that fly down the volcano, but they're not just normal avalanches at nearly 70 miles an hour with temperatures in excess of 1300 degrees Fahrenheit. Literally fire flashing people to death where their bodily fluids would instantly become boiling and their bodies were literally vaporized in minutes. Pompeii would not be the only city that was covered by this volcanic activity. Herculaneum and Oplantis were also cities that were destroyed or covered by this activity. Side note. We talk about atomic bombs and things like that in our world today. Well, this explosion on Mount Vesuvius was a hundred times more powerful than the first two atomic bombs that were dropped on Japan. Here's a little news flash. It's not funny. In fact, it's pretty freaking unfunny. Pompeii itself was rediscovered by a group led by Domenico Fontana, who really wanted to excavate the site out, but there were other pressing issues, so it was put on the back burner. As a matter of fact, the project would be abandoned for about 150 years, until the King of Naples ordered an excavation in 1758. Giuseppe Ferrelli took over the project in 1860. It was his insight that would allow for the plaster cast of the individuals killed at Pompeii to become seen once again. Let me explain. They would quickly discover voids that were found in the compressed ash around skeletons. They came to the conclusion that they could inject plaster into those voids. And when the material was removed around those plaster casts, the individuals that were buried were very much visible once again. There were other casualties to this as well, including animals such as this dog that's cast in its dying moments. Did I just see you close your eye? I just saw you open your eye. As the site was excavated and archaeologists were doing their work, they would take most of the interesting artworks and things of that sort to the National Museum of Naples, where it would go on display. But there were some pieces that would not go in front of the public, because the people of Pompeii were very open about their romantic lives, if you know what I mean. And there were lots of depictions that were a little bit not for public consumption. It was not until quite recently that those images and paintings and sculptures became a little bit more publicly presented. Yeah, and are you available? <laughs> I mean, in what sense? The time capsule that became Pompeii allows us, in our time, to very much have a better picture of what it was like to live in Pompeii. It gives us a glimpse of what it was like to be a part of the Roman Empire as the Roman Empire was at its peak. I can tell you from first-hand experience, there is nothing quite like walking down a sidewalk that's nearly 2,000 years old. There's nothing like walking into a bakery, or a temple, or a house, or the shower rooms, or a courtyard in a city that was flourishing over 2,000 years ago, encapsulated by volcanic ash and a devastating event that these folks actually witnessed and caused them to perish. It's my hope that we can learn through Pompeii and we can take this horrible natural disaster and make it an instrument for learning. One day I hope all my kids can go to Pompeii or any of these really great sites and witness those things firsthand, as well as any one of the billion other opportunities that we have in our world to learn and grow from the past. Folks, I hope you enjoyed that one on Pompeii. We'll see you next time. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Right, kids? Yeah! I hope you find our time videos. Yay. <laughs>
things never change.